Welcome to this Altaro video that goes together with a blog post about OneDrive for Business. Uh, please go and look at the blog post as well. In this first part, we're going to look at OneDrive for Business from an end user point of view in Windows 10 using the web interface, how to manage the different file states, files on demand, uh, files being stored only in the cloud, files being stored locally, how you can look at version history for a file, how the recycle bin in OneDrive for Business works and how you can share documents with people inside and outside your organization. So let's have a look at OneDrive for Business. This is on a Windows 10 machine. So I have two OneDrives here. This is a, uh, a OneDrive for Business up here, which is linked to my company name. Whereas down here, there is a personal OneDrive. Uh, we can see the subfolders. Now, some of these subfolders may only be pointers to what's in the cloud. And if I go into my client's Altaro folder here, now I look at my blog folder here, I can see files that I have locally here. Now, if I want to look at this from the web interface, I can get there in two different ways. I can right click on the OneDrive folder here and I can go to view online which will start a web browser and bring me directly there. If I'm not logged in, I've got to log in. And um, that's going to take me directly to um, the OneDrive for Business folders that I'm in. And again, I can go to my clients here and I can go to Altaro. And um, there is my uh, files that I've worked with Altaro on, right? Just like we saw in, in Windows Explorer on the local machine. The other location that I can get to this is um, just simply go to office.com and then click on the OneDrive icon in um, you know, office.com. So that's going to that's going to get me to the same place. So here is my OneDrive icon to get me into the to the OneDrive where I want to work in. OK, so that's how you can access it using the local uh, or the web interface. Now let's have a look at managing states. So um, we can see here that we have a few different states. This OneDrive for Business folder is located in the cloud. It's got a white cloud with a blue edge. This folder here is located on this machine. It's available locally, but it is not pinned. Right. And this one is available. So, for instance, if I go to archiving mailboxes in Office 365, I can right click on this folder and I can say free up space. What that's going to do is going to synchronize and turn this into a cloud only folder so that it does not take up any space on my local machine. Um, but it's still, of course, available in the cloud. Now, if I want one of these files to work on at the moment, so I'm going to grab this uh, blog post I wrote here for Altaro. As soon as I double click on it, it's going to synchronize that file down again and it's going to become a, <laughs> once it stops opening, it's going to become a, uh, a white circle with a green tick on it, right? That means that machine, that file is now available locally. However, if I go back up here, we can see this folder here. What I've done here, or let's pick this one here, I can go here and I can say always keep on this device. When I do that, it's going to synchronize down and I'm going to get a white tick on a green background that tells me that this is pinned to my local machine. So I definitely have all of these files here, even if I'm offline, I never need to worry about having connectivity or not. The next thing we want to consider here is the version history. So OneDrive for Business keeps track of my version history. So if I uh, go into this one folder here and we go to uh, the real cost here and I look at version history, I'm going to get a version history of this file that tells me all the different versions that were saved of this file up to 25 of them. This is, of course, also available in the web interface. So if we go back here, um, I think we were in there and I go to the same file here and I um, look at this one here. Um, I can see the details of this folder and I can look at my version history as well. So you've got a few other options here. Um, access we're going to talk about in a moment. I can download it manually. I can move or copy it to another location. I can see the details of this file. Uh, but we're going to look at version history now. And similarly to the other one, I then see my versions here when the file was worked on. 
uh, there's 19 versions of this particular file so that's version history now while we're here we might as well look at the recycle bin so this is where you you save your career when the uh, executive has deleted a file by mistake and they don't know how to find the recycle bin so here's my one drive for business recycle bin and this is where i can grab anything that i have deleted in the last 93 days 30 days for personal OneDrive, and i can simply highlight that uh, file and, and bring it back from here so that is is recycling and restoring stuff um, another handy thing that i can do here and um, perhaps now is, is a good time to look at the most important thing that OneDrive for Business gives us, and that's the ability to share these files with other people. So what I'm going to go and look at here is how I can share a file with somebody else. So in Windows Explorer, I can right click here and I can go to the blue share. That's going to give me some options here. I can share with people inside my organization only with people who already have um, an external account or guest account in my tenant, specific people with an email uh, or an anonymous link for anyone with a link, right? I can pick any of those options. Now, obviously anyone with a link is a bit risky from a security point of view, uh, but I can pick specific people. I can type in their email address. Um, I can allow editing um, and or um, you know if I say no nope, you can't edit the document uh, you could just view it I just want you to see this document but I don't want you to actually change it and if I do not allow editing I can also block download so they can only view it online in the online you know word in this case or Excel uh, solution so that's another option here now this can all be controlled by the administrator which is what we're going to look at in a minute. Now, the web-based interface, um, here's we're sending the link, I can copy it, go directly into Outlook or share it using another, another application. Um, and uh, I don't have a lot of other applications in here, so that's not an option here. Now, let's have a quick look at the web interface as well. So if we go back to... Um, recent files um, like this one here I can uh, share this document from the web interface as well and you can see the user interface is very similar right I can pick who I'm going to share with uh, am I going to allow them to review and see what's going on there can I block the download for uh, the file being downloaded to their local machine and they can only work on the online copy I have all of these options in here for sharing and I've even got um, you know a, a little help file here to tell me that I have to um, turn off allow editing to uh, block the download and there's more information here for end users on how to share information or share documents so that was the end user experience now let's look at it uh, from an administrator's experience, how they can control the sharing options that are available, synchronization options for local machines, storage management, um, you know, how you can control access from uh, different devices, um, and some little tips and tricks around compliance, notification, data migration, all based on the OneDrive for Administration um, Center. Okay, I am an administrator in my tenant, so I'm going to go into the admin console. And from the admin console, I'm going to access the SharePoint Online um, Management Center, uh, which is down here on the SharePoint in my admin centers. So this is the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, um, which has replaced the Office 365 Admin Center. Now, um, notice that I have some options here around policies for sharing. I'll just show these briefly. You can see that I've got options here for both SharePoint and OneDrive. And we'll see this in a, in a minute in the OneDrive Admin Center, which is down here. Now, when I click there, I'm taken to the separate Admin Center. Again, we got to log in as me. And here is the OneDrive Admin Center. Um, where I can first look at my sharing settings, which is obviously the most important thing you as an administrator need to work with the business to work, work out exactly what this should be set to. 
So first of all, we have the default link to, right? So the, the default link type. Can it be uh, shared with anyone with the link, only uh, with people in our organization or specific people? That's the default link type that the user is going to be offered when they go in to ask for uh, sharing a document, right? We got some other advanced settings here. We can set an, an expiry time so that links, um, you know, must expire within this number of days. Now the user can uh, turn that down. So if you set 30 days here, they can say, oh no, they only need this for 10 days, but they can't make it longer. And then for both files and folders, do you want to um, have the uh, option being, you know, view only or view, edit and upload. Then we have our external sharing, right? And this is where you can control both on SharePoint and OneDrive. And notice that your OneDrive settings cannot be more permissive than your SharePoint settings. So um, with SharePoint, I can slide this down and um, I can control here. Am I going to share with anyone? Uh, new and existing external users. So this forces, so anyone is anonymous sharing with anybody. Uh, new and existing external users means that um, somebody who gets a link sent to them who have not had a document shared with them from your organization before has to sign in and thus will create an external user in your Azure Active Directory tenant. Uh, alternatively, you can say that only existing external users, so you must have some other mechanism of inviting them into your organization. And then, of course, you can have the least, um, you know, least permissive where you can say you can only share with people inside my organization. And that's what these sliders are meant to do. Uh, they're not working 100% here in my edge, but you get the idea. You can slide these sliders up and down to, uh, to control access. Uh, now we have some advanced settings for external sharing as here as well. So you can have white and black lists for specific domains. Um, zoom in there a little bit. Um, the external users are forced to use the same account that the invitation was sent to. Um, and let external users share items they don't own. So does this allow them to reshare with another external users? And then, of course, to the person who shared the document, uh, you might want to leave it so that they can see the people who are viewing their files. OK, we've got some sync settings in here. There's really not a lot in here. Um, allow them to have the sync button. Um, allow syncing only on domain joint computers or block syncing of specific file types. Under here, storage, there is really uh, two settings. <laughs> Do you give them less storage than the one terabyte they get by default? And um, are you going to keep the data for less time than the 30 days by default once an account has been deleted, somebody's left your organization? Under device access, you can set some limitations. Um, uh, both for network location, um, uh, you know, allow access from apps that don't use modern authentication. So all auth uh, based authentication. We have mobile application management. You have some settings in here um, through access policies. Um, but if you have policies in Intune where most organizations manage access uh, to these sorts of settings, um, you don't have to set them in here, right? You can set them out there. And um, compliance really is just links to search through the audit log in general in Office 365, creating DLP policies, so data loss prevention policies, setting retention policies, uh, using e-discovery for finding data inside of, of um, OneDrive for Business in this case, locations, and setting up an alert when an, or a specific audit event happens for a specific set of users. So all of this is ge really just a generic Office 365 functionality, but uh, there's some handy links for them here. Second last tab is notifications, where we can have an email sent to users. Um, so uh, you know, they're going to get notified when somebody's sharing a file with them and when you are sharing a file or when a user is sharing a file, um, see when external users accept that invitation, um, get an email when an anonymous link is created or changed. Um, 
and if other users invite additional exter external users to these shared files that are that are files that I owned. The data migration tab is really just a link to an article that talks about uh, the different tools you can use to migrate on-premises data to OneDrive for Business. I hope you have enjoyed uh, this little overview of OneDrive for Business. Make sure you go and have a read of the blog post on Altaro's blog as well, altaro.com. And uh, thank you for watching this video. Hope it was useful.